Hello, so today I'm going to be trying to reorganize my bookshelf. If you've watched my videos before, you might know that normally I have a bookshelf back here. Instead I've got some random soft toys and an old bed. This is a work in progress too. But I also have all my books stacked up over there. And I have some more books in the cupboard and all these empty shelves to fill. So, I'm going to work on that tonight. Also, what I kind of want to try and do is, my shelves before I did all this changing around were quite a mess. I want to try and divide my books up. I like to have authors together. I like to have books of the same genre together or books about the same topic together. And I think I'd also like to try and separate adult, MYA and middle grade books. But I feel like I tried to do this before and it didn't work. Uh, but the ones in the hallway are all my non-fiction books and I'm going to try and put them somewhere else which gives me more shelves to work with here. So maybe I can make it work? Maybe. I don't know. But we're going to try. I'm going to bring you along and share how we work through it, I guess. Oh, this is a mess already. So this is going to be a problem because like, I'm pretty sure this is YA. But I bet there are some things that are borderline. I guess I can look them up. Hmm. We'll see. So another problem we have is authors who write fantasy and science fiction. So an example is Ryan Groudon, Invictus's Time Travel, Wolf by Wolf is Shapeshifters, which I would have put as fantasy. However, the shapeshifters are a result of scientific experiments. So I'm going to put them both as sci-fi, but I have some other authors that are trouble like this as well. Brandon Sanderson. Also, these books, the Vicious series is this fantasy or sci-fi. It's like superhero people who gain powers. There's a reason behind it, but is it like really scientific? Is it? Not really. And the rest of VH12 stuff is fantasy. So I'd rather put it with fantasy. I'm just going to do it. There's no room here for VH12. <sighs> New adult books? Where do they go? Where's my weird shirt section? I can't believe I don't have a weird shit section. I should have more weird shit books. I can't believe I don't have a cat section. It can go with the books. Mm. It has to go here. And sometimes, sometimes the genre of a book is kind of a spoiler. Okay, so the problem I have is that I have grouped everything into some kind of categorization. But does it help me understand things? Not really. I honestly don't even know where to start from here. Um, I've kind of got over here like thrillers and horrors, mixing into contemporaries, mixing into fantasies, shit ton of fantasy. <laughs> and then we kind of merge into science fiction. But we've got authors who write science fiction fantasy and ones that write science fiction and fantasy. And I think something that I didn't really talk about is I also kind of want to put authors together like if they're ones that I've read in my teens. I'd like to put them together so like older authors and then newer authors could go together. But there's like too many groupings and I've got the problem where I want to put all the time travel books together but then I've got books by authors who've written time travel books that aren't time travel books. So how do I put those near the ones that are time travel books? Like is it more important to me that all my time travel books are together or is it more important to me that all my books by the same author are together? I don't know. So I think my first step is just going to be pulling out some of my favorite authors and putting them on because I probably want my favorite authors on the top shelf. So that's going to mean Brandon Sanderson, Robin Hobb, Victoria Schwab, Maggie Stiefvater, probably N.K. Jemison, Cameron Hurley. Yeah, let's start there. It really makes no sense to put kind, nice science fiction against violent, horrible science fiction. Maybe these ones should go together. These guys can go on a shelf together because they wrote books together. Why are all the boys getting the top shelf? That's shit. Mm, maybe it's fine. Lump them all together. 
Now, if the rest of you could just get on the shelves, weave along, that would be good. Oh, but I kind of want to put New Zealand books together. What's happening here? Why are they empty shelves? Why didn't I write this down to begin with? <laughs> I'm sure I'm just moving things around in circles. Why is there a big gap in the middle? Okay, so this is where we're at. There's only a few left on the ground, mostly middle grade young YA type ones. Uh, I'm not really satisfied with this. But also I've spent too long on it, so I guess I'm going to continue at a later date. I just really don't know where my contemporaries should go. The problem is some of my science fictions are written by the same person as my contemporaries, although that's not true. I'm thinking of The Time Traveler's Wife and Her Fearful Symmetry as contemporaries, but they are 100% not. It's certainly debatable whether The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock is a contemporary. It's really hard to know what to do with books that are technically contemporary but they're written in a fantastical way. There's definitely bits in The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock which debatably something paranormal happens. It depends on how you interpret it. Um, but it doesn't really make sense to put contemporary next to fantasy either, although I do have a bunch of middle grades like uh, The Magic Misfits, which again technically nothing magical happens, but I think I'd probably call it a fantasy. I don't really have many adult books like that except for the horror books. No, those definitely get paranormal. It's Stephen King and like Death Note's got a bloomin' death god in it. Maybe I should just put my contemporaries on the shelf with my thrillers. The thrillers go really naturally next to the horror. And the horror does go naturally next to the fantasy. Do I move everything along? Oh, my brain. I'm definitely done for today. We will try again. I don't know when. I don't have time to sort out this room anymore. Hello, so it's like a week later and about a week ago I was thinking maybe this was as good as I was going to get it pretty much. I made a couple of tiny adjustments but I thought it was pretty close. <laughs> and then while I was looking at it, because I was sitting in this office all week working from home, looking at my bookshelves, and I realized that this book, Snapshot, it's time travel. So it needs to be down here with the other time travel ones, or at least it needs to be next to them, according to my strategy. So that's annoying, but what I think I can do is move Brandon Sanderson down and shuffle things around from there. As well, I decided that I've put Robin Hobb down here, but actually I would like Robin Hobb to be near a lot of the books that I've read in my late teens, early 20s, because even though I didn't read Robin Hobb around the same time, she was publishing around the same time as these authors. So I think I've got a plan, I'm going to try and implement it and we'll see whether it works. Okay, Robin Hobb still needs to be on this side though, because Robin Hobb has science fiction in this. It's so hard to remember. Also, Robin Hobb is going to need to expand at some point. Technically, science fiction fantasy should go over here. This is a problem because it should be with the rest of Robin Hobb, but we're putting it down there. Can I fix that problem? Okay, I think, at least for now, we are done. So let me take you on a tour of some kind. So along the top I've put all my graphic novels and random other things. I still actually need to put all of these things somewhere. Um, but that's a problem for another day, I think.
I'm kind of liking at the moment how this looks without anything on the shelves other than books. So I'm kind of tempted not to add any of those things. But then what do I do with all those things that I do quite like some of them? Have to find a home for them somewhere. Okay, so basically down this side we've got science fiction. Uh, except for this bottom row is basically all my Babysitter's Club books. So science fiction and these ones are the kind of YA time travel ones. Then we have regular time travel ones. This is Julian May, which has time travel involved in the overall story. Although these science fiction and fantasies on the side don't have time travel, but that's fine. Julian May is together. Then I've got Mary Robinette Cowell and Brandon Sanderson's science fiction-y stuff. And also just um, Ray Bradbury, Ursula Le Guin in there. I mean, they're nice white books. It kind of matches. I really want some more books from this series. I think that would really make this shelf a bit nicer. And then I've got this shelf, which is rather intense science fiction and science fiction fantasy. I think a lot of people have heard of the Broken Earth trilogy. Not many people I see talking about the Beldame Apocrypha trilogy, but I really do recommend it. Anyway, then I have Robin Hobb, who we at some point think is going to expand. And when she expands, she can probably go down here because here I've got these books just in their own shelf each, which is probably unnecessary. But I kind of like the look of Crescent City all by itself. Honestly, I only bought Crescent City because of how beautiful the cover is. Anyway, all the way along the top of the fantasy section is books from when I was younger, even though I've been reading the Kate Elliott series more recently, and I read this more recently too. This has Melanie Rawn, Jennifer Robeson, and Kate Elliott in it. So we've got Kate Elliott here, and then Jennifer Robeson and Melanie Rawn here. So that's all kind of tied together. Then I've got a few Mercedes Lackey books that I mostly have kept because I like the covers. A couple from series that I kind of like to reread and maybe I never finished this Diana Treegard series. Oh, and then I've got a couple of the Thomas Covenant books, which I really like, although there is some problematic elements in them. Some Mickey Zuckerberg Kurt and some Tanya Huff. Gotta always have a cat on the cover. Uh, then I have a random Patrick Rothfuss shelf. Who knows if we'll ever get the third book from that trilogy. And I haven't even put these in order, but I kind of don't want to put them in order because I think it will look ugly. So this is a short story anthology with a lot of authors in it. It does include Patrick Rothfuss and Brandon Sanderson. So we're back to this Brandon Sanderson section, which I swear I moved about a trillion times. And we have no room for any more Stormlight Archive books. So that's going to be a problem at some point in the future too. But again, we do have some room for expansion down there somewhere. Okay, then I've got Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. It's kind of sci-fi fantasy. So again, it's gone at that end. I kind of put it with Scott Lynch. I feel like both those authors were somewhat problematic, but I can't actually remember about Scott Lynch. So maybe I'm making that up, which is not very nice to do. I do feel like these authors have some kind of similarity, kind of, in their writing style and probably their audience. And I really need to move that Robin Hobb book at some point. Uh, then I have Victoria Schwab who goes down and down. So it's the YA section down here, which is honestly a bit of a mess and I'm not entirely happy with it. And I'm a bit sad that some of my favorite YA books like the Half Bad series or The Dark Vault by Victoria Schwab or Strange the Dreamer are like way down here where no one can see them. Um, also, these ones are mainly like New Zealand YA fantasy and middle grade. And above it, I've got like more YA slash adult New Zealand fantasy. Also, like The Raven Cycle and All the Crooked Saints is another one I'm sad that's all the way down here. But I did manage to get my Holly Black YA books next to my Holly Black middle grade book, so that's something. The middle grade section's also a mess, and I mainly put a bunch of these down here because they're like books about magical horses or just regular horses or magical cats. So, sure, they go together. <laughs> and this section over here is like contemporary books. I guess Sweet Valley High is YA, so it doesn't really belong on the middle sh grade shelf, but I put it there because it kind of goes with the Babysitter's Club books in that it's a long-running series. And these other fantasy ones here are ones that are like, I, I call them fantasy books and I think of them as fantasy books, but when I think about it, nothing magical actually happens. They're really just contemporaries with that fantastical feeling. I also have all my like YA thrillers, my point thrillers, my Christopher Pikes. I know Looking for Alaska and We Were Liars maybe don't fit on there, but in a way they're kind of thrillers because they are building up to something. And as well my Avril Lavigne 
<laughs> comic books probably don't fit there either but like they're so weird they're not going to go with anything else um above that i have what thrillers i have including the ones that were my mum's and that i inherited and above that we've got horror and just contemporary which i don't have much of either so i put them there i mean i guess you could kind of say that death note and fragments of horror are horror as well but i've put them on shelves of their own because i think they are deserving so that is my shelves so let me know if you've got any thoughts about my shelves if you saw any interesting books on there do you have any ideas about what other improvements i can make in the way that i'm laying things out i'm not sure i want to know because you might just make me want to shuffle these all around all over again but feedback is good so so let's let's have it otherwise thank you so much for watching i hope that you are doing well and i will see you next time